Conference play is officially here for Texas Tech as they will open up against Arizona State on Saturday out in the 806. But the question arises, what can you expect from Texas Tech in the Big 12 this season? In today's video, we'll run down the schedule. We'll also look at some FBI and the projections in terms of percentage chances. Texas Tech wins every game for the rest of the season is four keys for Texas Tech through this non-con schedule have been identified. Number one, get Taj Brooks the damn football. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's RC Maxwell here for the Back to 12 podcast. If you haven't already, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell for 100% free and authentic Texas Tech content each and every day for your Texas Tech Red Raiders on the gridiron or the hardwood for Texas Tech men's basketball. Go ahead and join the largest group of Texas Tech fans on YouTube today by doing those three simple steps of liking the video, hitting that subscribe button, and turning on that notification bell. If you know anything about me in this channel, you know I like to get interactive. And so I want to ask you guys, from the jump, after that great win on Saturday for Texas Tech, I don't give a damn if it was against UNT. They were up 52-7, to people, at halftime. I don't give a damn if you're playing air. That's impressive, okay? How many wins will Texas Tech have in the Big 12 this year? So, again, another way to ask this. Texas Tech will win blank Big 12 conference games in 2024. Let me know down on the pinned comment below your answer. All right, so I already mentioned who Texas Tech was playing in game number one of their Big 12 slate. That is the Sun Devils of Arizona State. They will then face off against the Bearcats of Cincinnati at home. So you have a nice cushion to start out with, at least theoretically, for the Red Raiders in terms of Big 12 play, starting at home against two of the teams that well, if we're just being honest about it, are projected to finish closer towards the bottom of the Big 12. That's not to say they haven't had a couple of impressive wins, specifically Arizona State, but that's what they were projected to be. So you play them first, then you head out to Arizona and you play the Wildcats, a team that just got drubbed up in Manhattan in a non-con game against the Kansas State Wildcats. Then you then come back home after a bye week and face off against the Baylor Bears where then you go on a road trip to play TCU and Iowa State back-to-back -back weeks. That'll be difficult before coming home to face off against the Fighting Coach Primes and the Colorado Buffaloes on November 9th. After you play Colorado, you go to Oklahoma State, a team that will likely be competing for a chance to play in the Big 12 title game in Arlington. Then you come home for senior night, does Texas Tech, for the last game of the year on, I believe, November 30th to play the West Virginia Mountaineers, okay? This is what ESPN's matchup predictor for Texas Tech gives them in each and every game that they play for the rest of the season. Again, you got nine Big 12 games on the slate. You've got, if we're being honest about it, right? Like Tech fans, look in the mirror real quick. If we're being honest about it, there's maybe not an easier schedule in the Big 12 this year than the one that the Red Raiders have. You avoid Utah. You avoid Kansas State, right? You avoid UCF. You avoid some big-time players, even Kansas in there, no matter what you think about Kansas, right? You avoid those teams, okay? So you think about it from that perspective. Those are four teams right there that I just mentioned that have a chance to finish in the top six of the Big 12, and you avoid two-thirds of them. Not too bad if you're Texas Tech. All right. When it comes to the predictor on ESPN, and again, this is more of one of those things where their algorithm has it and there's other sites that do it too. But I think it's interesting from the standpoint of basically it being a football power index. Texas Tech has a 52.3% chance to beat Arizona State, according to their model over on ESPN. The Red Raiders are actually favored in this one. Started out as minus three and a half. I believe that line has now moved down to two and a half at the time of this recording late Sunday night. The Red Raiders have a 66.5% chance, basically a two-thirds chance, to beat Cincinnati the next week. They have a 45% chance to win at Arizona, a team that was, well, ranked to begin the year and now are outside the top 25. A 55% chance to beat Baylor at home, and then a 33.7% chance to win at TCU and a 38.3% chance to win at Iowa State. I don't know what they see in TCU in this model. I'll be honest. 
Um, I just I, I don't see it. And maybe they prove me wrong. Then you come home and you face off against Colorado where you have a 54 percent chance to beat Shador Sanders, Travis Hunter, Coach Prime and the Colorado Buffaloes. Then you go to Oklahoma State. This is the game that you have the least percentage chance, according to the ESPN model, to win. And it's about a 25 percent chance coming in just under that at 24.7. And then on senior night, you have a 58.4 percent chance to win that game, according to the model. So if we're going to go strictly off of projecting right in terms of, hey, this is the percentage chance you have to win. Texas Tech is two and one going into conference play. Their model at ESPN has the Red Raiders beating Arizona State, Cincinnati, Baylor, Colorado, and West Virginia, which means the Red Raiders would go seven and five, right? I, if we're being honest about it, that sounds about right, right? Like, I get it. There was a lot of hype this offseason, but if we're being honest about it, I predicted Texas Tech to go eight and four. I had them winning at Washington State. That obviously didn't happen, right? So naturally it goes down to seven and five. I think that that's where you're at as a program right now in the sense of what this team has shown you. If you handle business at home, which they have proven to do, well, somewhat. The ACU was definitely a scare. Uh, but you would think maybe this team has turned a corner going into Big 12 play after their performance against UNT. They're favored in those games. So basically five of the remaining nine games. If you think about it, you could pull off one road victory. You know the stats by now in terms of Joey McGuire's teams getting better as the year progresses. Maybe you pull out a win at TCU, right? That gets you to eight and four. But if we're being honest about this, in true honesty, not from a negative perspective or a positive perspective, but just shooting you straight right down the middle, right? Seven and five sounds about right, right? But it all starts with these four keys, in my opinion, for Texas Tech, what they have to do to maybe be better than seven and five. First and foremost, use the damn play action in RPO game. I get it. It was UNT. But did you see how comfortable Baron Morton looked in this offense? And we'll talk about a major reason why here in just a second. But did you see how comfortable he looked in this offense when the run game was prioritized early? The offensive line could go in there and get a feel for the game, and then Barron could just absolutely sling it across the yard. Again, he had he was 15 for 19 against UNT. Again, I will say it one more time, just so everybody does not come at me in the comments. I know it was UNT, people, but you cannot discredit the performance Barron Morton had. He had more touchdowns, if you include his rushing one, than incompletions. He had five total touchdowns and only four incompletions, people. He was brilliant. And the reason that I think he was was because he was more comfortable with the game plan in the sense of the usage of the RPO, the play action passing game. And yes, Taj Brooks is a big impact and reason why on that. But I think that this is where Texas Tech has to go if they want to have a recipe for success. Now, teams are going to try and take that away. Beautiful. Beautiful. If you want to take away the play action and RPO game. Beautiful. That's right. Because you know what that means? If they try and take that away, they're probably dropping back more people into coverage. That's a lighter box that Taj Brooks has to run into. Okay. You want to be more aggressive and you want to have more people in the box. Okay. Pick your poison here. Now you've got Josh Kelly on the outside, Caleb Payday Douglas on the outside, Coy Aiken on the outside, Jalen Conyers on the outside, all on one-on-one -on -one matchups. You feel good about that, right? 50-50 balls for most of those guys are more like 70-30. OK, so you feel good about that if you're Texas Tech. And I think that that's the thing in terms of I know this is a cliche and I can already hear some people saying, or see, that is the most cliche bullshit I've ever heard. Well, it's kind of the truth, though, with this offense. And it's the luxury that you have when Taj Brooks is out there. Take what the defense gives you. If you see a loaded box, more than likely that means they're playing man and it's one on one on the outside. Use that to your advantage, right? If there's a lighter box, hand that shit off to Taj Brooks. I mean, it's just what the defense gives you. And I know I'm simplifying that to a literally a first grade level. Speak to me like I'm five Michael Scott gift, right? I get it. But also at the same time, I think that that's the beauty of this Texas Tech offense. There is beauty and simplicity in Texas Tech has a lot of fundamental principles in the sense that if they keep it simple, they tend to do a lot better, right?
Speaking of Barron, let him sling it around, right? He was sensational on 10-plus yard throws down the field. He was 6 of 8 on those throws against UNT, and a lot of that was due to the multiple play action and RPO sets that they ju- that we just discussed that Texas Tech ran against UNT. I don't think you can run that exact offense each and every Big 12 game, right? But you can run a lot of it. You can run 70% of it, 80% of it. Now, you won't have the outcome of 52-7 to 7 at halftime like you did, but – you will have more of a fighting chance in the sense of it working out well for you if you do what is good for your team. And I think that that is solidifying the run early because that opens things up for Barron, and Barron looks to be back when it comes to the zip. Now there's a couple of throws that he's flat out missed um, early on in the season, but overall the arm strength is there, and I expect him to progress moving forward throughout the season, and a big, large part of doing that is allowing him to operate in the play action and RPO heavy offense, which will allow him to push the ball downfield where he was actually pretty damn good. Now, we'll go to defense real quick before we shift back to offense. Contain, contain, contain. I know it doesn't show up in the stats, but I thought the pass rush was absolutely phenomenal for the Red Raiders against UNT. They had an elite level of pressures on the quarterback. They also had QB hurries. They had a ton of great things, albeit only one sack. But you look at the metrics, UNT was getting the ball out really, really quickly, right? They were making Chandler Morris really uncomfortable. UNT is probably the weakest offensive line Texas Tech will play on their schedule in terms of remaining, right? Like there's there's levels to this, understandably so. But if Texas Tech can contain and not allow these quarterbacks to get outside the pocket, extend plays, and really put a hamper and weight on their secondary, I think that there's a lot to be excited about. Amir Washington, I thought, was good in this game. Other guys as well. Outside of really Isaac Smith and that one horse collar tackle, there's no flaws in terms of what they did against UNT. I thought they were sensational and a lot of positives moving forward. They had 15-plus QB hurries in this one against UNT. They won't have that moving forward against Big 12 competition, but again, if you can contain and just make things difficult in terms of throwing lanes and keeping your hands up, that's uh, that's almost as good as a sack in a lot of ways for Texas Tech. All right, last one before we get out of here. Again, appreciate y'all tuning in. Uh, It's Taj Brooks, and I get it. I'm not a rocket scientist. I'm not telling you, you anything you don't know already, but I think you can see it in UNT and Wazoo are really what I'm looking at here. And yes, Wazoo is better than UNT, but you saw the impact that Taj Brooks had in the sense of making this offense go like Baron Morton and his health is critical. There's no doubt about it. But if you're talking about the most fundamentally important player on this Texas Tech offense in 2024, it is Taj Brooks, period, end of story. He opens things up and makes things like tremendously easier for each and every other individual that Texas Tech trots out there, the other 10, right? He's that guy, and it allows Zach Kitley to play call the game in a way that is more comfortable and more efficient and effective for him. And Taj Brooks proved that in the first half. He didn't even need to take a snap in the second half against UNT. And again, I know it was UNT, but you want to see these building blocks that you had in terms of positives from UNT go into Arizona State and use them and you know, tinker them a little bit. Obviously, you don't want to just trot out the same exact thing, but use those base fundamental properties of what you did against UNT and put them in in terms of the game plan against Arizona State because I promise you, Texas Tech, if they continue to use the play action and RPO and defenses prioritize Taj Brooks, which they will, this Texas Tech passing offense will have a night and day difference in terms of just efficiency and really just how easy it's going to be for Baron Morton to make one-on-one reads specifically in man coverage. All right, that's going to do it. Again, I think Texas Tech, realistically, we're looking at seven and five right here. And compared to a couple of weeks ago when the world was burning down, well, or the sky was falling, I guess you should say, chicken little, um, You feel good about it, and obviously the UNT game has a lot to do with that, but Texas Tech has an easier schedule than most in the Big 12. Now you just have to protect home field, and you should be able to do it if you're the Red Raiders looking at the schedule. So, again, let me know down below. Texas Tech will win blank Big 12 conference games in 2024. Let me know down on the pinned comment below. And if you haven't already, join the largest group of Texas Tech fans here on YouTube, over 10,600 people strong right here on the 100% free daily Texas Tech podcast channel. 
it can't get any better than that. It's quick. You get all the information you need. And by the way, it's interactive as hell as well. So do these three steps. If you want to join the back to 12 squad, all you simply got to do is like the video, hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell.